Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar discussion on the entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem at Penn State. My name is Tim Kurczynski. I'm the uh, innovation lead here at Penn State's uh, PenTap, which is uh, commonly referred to as Pennsylvania Technical Assistance Program. I'm going to be your presenter and uh, tour guide for today's discussion about uh, some of the entrepreneurial resources at Penn State and where you can find them. Uh, if you have ever had an idea that you thought uh, potentially could be turned into a business, we want to help uh, you find the resources you need to pursue it and hopefully a pathway that you can follow over time. Um, okay, before we start, a few housekeeping items. If you have uh, any technical difficulties accessing or hearing the uh, presentation today, please use the chat pod and we'll try to address them as quickly as we can. We'll wait to answer any specific questions uh, until the end of the presentation, but feel free to type any questions into the chat pod as you think of them as we go through the presentation. And then there'll be time to type in at the end as well. The presentation will last about 40 minutes, followed by a question and answer period. Um, and finally, please note that uh, today's slides will, will include a lot of hyperlinks to many additional resources. I thought this would be important for those of you that want to uh, have this uh, to maybe forward on to other students or other people within your launch boxes and that type of thing. I'll be highlighting some of these in the presentation, but many I will only mention because we just don't have enough time to go to all of them. However, if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint slides after today's webinar for, for future reference and to forward, please, please just email me at my address at the end and I'll be happy to send those slides to you. The complete webinar is also being recorded today and it's gonna be archived and available for future viewing on the PenTap and Invent Penn State websites. However, like, like I said, the hyperlinks won't work on the recording, so you're gonna need the original PowerPoints to access those. Okay. Uh, the intent of today's webinar is to really help build awareness within the Penn State communities throughout the Commonwealth as well as the student body here at Penn State at the many, many different entrepreneurial resources, most all of them free, that uh, individuals can take advantage of here in Pennsylvania. I'm going to try to present them in an orderly way. There's just so many of them that uh, this will be a challenge. but. Um, I'm going to try to present them as the normal progression that you might see, be seeking them as you uh, go from one idea to possibly starting a company. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, for today's discussion, I thought it would be good to start with an overview of the Invent Penn State uh, initiative. Um, the um, uh, it's, uh, gives you some context as to the purpose behind um, uh, the economic development effort that we have here at Penn State. And uh, the Invent Penn State sh uh, initiative shows us all how to support student entrepreneurs as well as uh, community uh, ecosystems and community entrepreneurs. Uh, we're building out innovation hubs across the Commonwealth within Invent Penn State. We currently have 21 uh, Penn State uh, campuses that are uh, um, participating and are there with uh, these types of innovation hubs to support you now and uh, for those of you that are students after you graduate and also for you community members uh, these sites are currently available and you'll see links later on in the presentation. We're going to move <clears throat> on and talk about various resources that are currently available at each stage of a new company and its development. So um, we're going to focus on entrepreneurship resources and we're gonna start with community. We're gonna focus then and continue on through the education and how you can educate yourself in certain areas, how you go through the ideation process. Then again, if you're starting to build a company, how do we build it and grow it as we go along? So, um, the Invent Penn State initiative, for those of you who don't know, was launched in 2015 as a, a Commonwealth-wide um, Penn State initiative. Um, it was uh, to create a university environment that encourages entrepreneurship, not only with students, but with community members, faculty, and the like. So um, it is something that um, uh, it falls in line with President Barron's initiatives when he became president about four years ago with um, economic development being important, engagement with community and with students, entrepreneurship being some things that were very important to him. 
Uh, we also want to encourage faculty to develop new intellectual property here at Penn State and then to commercialize a lot of that intellectual property to where it can be used in, in, by Pennsylvanians and, and people worldwide. And we also want to, for sure, give students the opportunity to have tools available should they have an idea of, of starting a company that uh, the resources are here for them. Uh, I thought it was important to just to show this quote of uh, President Barron says the, the aim of Penn, Penn, Penn State is to drive job creation, economic development, and student career success by connecting researchers with the people who can help bring their discoveries to the marketplace. Penn State is developing a culture that encourages, nurtures, and rewards entrepreneurship in all fields of study. Uh, this is something I can testify to, that President Barron is very serious about this. Uh, this initiative is quite large across the state, and I believe that uh, Penn State being the land-grant university for Pennsylvania, this is a mission that he feels very strongly about. Um, in the 21st century, uh, we know that technology and startups is where the, uh, the high paying jobs and growth is going to be. We want to uh, be able to also show our students that um, they don't have to go to Silicon Valley to get a good job, that uh, startups and uh, new ideas and technology are right here in Pennsylvania and, and uh, can be uh, great places to start a company. And so <clears throat> with these innovation hubs, we're putting forward resources that can be deployed to help you stay where you want to live. If you want to live in Pennsylvania, we're going to have those resources for you. This uh, slide right here will show you the uh, 21 uh, campus locations across the Commonwealth that have these innovation hubs. Uh, just for a little bit of uh, background, uh, these all these campuses presented proposals for seed grant uh, money that helped to uh, develop their uh, innovation hub where Penn State University is, is providing some seed money for a three-year period to help them uh, get established and build upon uh, the ideas that make sense in their particular region of the state. Uh, some of these innovation hubs are built around uh, community partnerships. They all are actually built around community partnerships, but some of them are built around establishing spaces. Some of them are built around uh, a lot of heavy in the student and communi community entrepreneurship development. Some are around uh, economic development programs such as revitalizing towns and neighborhoods. Uh, it all uh, fits and, and, and flows with economic development as uh, most people would define it. If we look at the innovation hubs for the 20 one campuses, I wanted to list them all and also give you a link to where you can click on them. So if we clicked on the Altoona Launchbox link here real quick, we'll see that each one of these uh, campuses has resources regionally in their area that both students and community can take advantage of. So feel free if you get the, my copy of the uh, PowerPoint slides, all of these exist. You can also find them by just Googling them as well. Um, they all have variations of services and collaborations, different types of local resources, different, because every region has regional economic development needs. <clears throat> to give you an example, our Harrisburg uh, campus is uh, close to um, uh, Hershey Medical Center is also the uh, Dickinson School of Law. So they might have more resources that are focused in that particular area of entrepreneurship. Our new Kensington campus, uh, in addition, is they're, they're, they're taking an approach to revitalizing their community in New Kensington. And uh, so some of the resources that they're providing is, is focused on community revitalization. Our Happy Valley Launchbox here in University Park campus uh, is, is probably the most robust only because the fact that we have 46,000 students here. And so um, we have a lot more uh, people uh, attending and coming to our facilities on a daily basis. And so a lot of our resources are, are focused on students, but also uh, those same resources can be utilized by any of our community members. Um, I thought this slide was interesting because uh, e ecosystem resources are out there and uh, I know from having two teenage boys that it doesn't matter how many resources you have, if you don't know how to use them, they'll never be enough. So sometimes people have to understand a little bit about the resources and how to use them correctly as they go forward. So let's take a look at um, 
this is a really crazy slide here, but this will show you just at the University Park campus alone, the undergraduate student entrepreneurship ecosystem. It's kind of small for you to see, but I think I put it in here mostly to show you how robust it is, that there are so many resources that the students just need to know where they're trying to plug in at. So if they're, if they're plugging in from the education side and they want to learn more they can they can come over to this side and look at all the different resources that are available if they are looking for competitions they can come down here and then also if they're looking for co-working spaces and tools there's other places that they can go each one of our campus innovation hubs will have something similar it may not be as robust as this but they'll have something similar as far as an approach and how you can plug in to those resources so i would encourage everybody to um, go to those and try to plug in as, at, at the level that you, that you want to. Um, as we go forward, I want to talk about the flow of how we're going to go about looking at these resources. There's so many of these resources that are available that we almost have to put them in categories and so we can kind of take a look at where's the right place to plug in depending on where I'm at in my uh, process of either becoming an entrepreneur or wanting to learn about it. Um, Taking a look at this slide will help you understand a little bit more about how we're going to flow through today. Um, uh, the natural order is going from uh, con connecting into your community through education, coming up with ideas, building upon those ideas, and then growing out a potential company. Um, that's, this is the kind of a natural order of how we would go through something where we support and encourage people to, to uh, maybe take a risk. Then as we educate them, they start to build a vision. They move on from that vision to potentially forming a company. And then once they get a company, we know that investment and revenue is really important issues for a, a, a new struggling company. And we try to find resources to help people in those areas. Um, you don't have to do all of these. Um, you kind of start where it makes sense. So uh, if I had already an, a really good idea and I had some good uh, background and I know my community pretty well, I might be able to come right into the ideation phase. But uh, uh, the key here is, is that we want to have a comfort level and a support for each one of these that people can plug into. And also where we can help people get the uh, skills and uh, uh, sets that they need. And again, you can jump around in any of these areas. You can go right from uh, education to building and growing out a company. So this isn't set in stone, but it gives you a good idea of how we can how we could progress through. So let's take a look at community. So um, uh, this would make sense for a student. Let's say you're a freshman at Penn State. You have a, no idea, but you know that you have an entrepreneurial spirit. How do I get connected to the community around an entrepreneurship? This would flow just as well for any housewife or any person that maybe be out of work and they decide that maybe I want to start a company of my own. How do I come to a comfortable place that I know that I can plug in and people will encourage me and help me find the resources that I need. Um, so we have lots of local facilities. Uh, we have co-spaces here at Penn State. There's maker spaces uh, like up in Erie and other places around the state where you can actually go in and, and use tools like real tools as far as building out prototypes and things like that. Um, we have um, most of our launch boxes have a physical locate. I think probably all of them have a physical location where you can go and, and get it involved in the community of people that are thinking alike about uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, some of these places will actually have an opportunity for you to uh, maybe even rent a desk or rent a space to where you'd have a quiet place to work and, and to um, uh, meet other people uh, that are in the same kind of uh, startup capacity as you are. Um, Maker Commons are uh, something that we have here at Penn State where 3D printing and other types of things can be done for students uh, when they have ideas that they want to move forward with. We have uh, those in our library here at University Park. The Maker Commons is also open to all students from other campuses around the state where they could send in a 3D printing uh, file and uh, the, the, the object could be 3D printed for them and sent to their campus. Um, the student entrepreneur clubs like InnoBlue and is one that we have here at University Park Campus. 
we're encouraging a lot of the other innovation hubs that uh, have strong um, uh, student campuses uh, and student enrollments to start looking at um, developing entrepreneurship clubs there. But also students from other campuses can participate uh, and connect with the one here at University Park as well. So I would encourage any students listening to click on Inno Blue and find out how you could engage there. We also, in the community aspect, we have local startup support groups. One right here in Center County is called the Center Region Entrepreneurship Network. And um, that is something that was started by a, a, a highly successful entrepreneur here in State College area. But this is something that just takes somebody willing to get the ball rolling. And now the Cren operation here is very, very robust and has hundreds of people that are involved and, and they, they meet and uh, they actually collaborate on projects and that type of thing. The Lion Launchpad um, also is a student uh, thing here at Penn State University Park. They also have a special living option where students um, can uh, look for mentors to help them with the product idea and viability. They live together in a particular dormitory atmosphere, and so we have like people sitting around uh, ide ideating and thinking about things. Um, I would say try to get connected to these kinds of things in your community. Uh, I would highly encourage most all of them probably have a Facebook page or something that you can link to and be uh, updated on new things in your region. Uh, seek out those things in your region. <clears throat> and also we'll talk a little bit about um, the small business development centers. There's 18 of those resources around the state and those are great places to plug in for people who are just starting in their entrepreneurship journey. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the education side. There's a lot of resources out there that people can tie into from an educational perspective. Um, the first one listed here is the Corporate Innovation and Entrepreneurship Major here at Penn State. Um, that's actually available, I believe, to all the different campuses that have two plus two programs. So you can take your first two years of that at most all of the um, uh, Commonwealth campuses, and then the final two years you'd need to come to University Park to complete that. But that's a, a four-year uh, bachelor's program uh, for uh, students here at Penn State. The Entrepreneurship and Innovation Minor, I'm gonna click on that. That is uh, something that all students um, at University Park can participate in. And now we have many, many uh, campuses uh, around the state that are also starting to connect uh, and, and pull together coursework at, uh, for minors in particular different areas. The thing that's interesting about um, the uh, Entrepreneurship Minor an innovation minor is that there's a lot of different specialty areas that you can gain credits in. So if you look down here on this link, um, you can have arts entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship at, as advocacy, hospitality management, new media, food and bio, um, then your general new ventures and social entrepreneurship, and then top technology-based entrepreneurship. So uh, this is, a, 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 I think, one of the top minors now at Penn State. It, I'm not sure if it is the top one, but it's growing very, very fast, and students are very interested in this. So uh, I would say look into that if, that's, uh, if you're an undergraduate student and looking for uh, a minor to um, uh, build upon those resources. Faculty engagement and business and engineering curriculums there's a lot of uh, different types of, uh, of classroom projects that are being done uh, uh, in a lot of the different uh, coursework at Penn State in these areas. It's not only limited to the business and engineering curriculum, but I've listed those as being a very common ones that do that to where they have students think about uh, an idea of a new product or service as part of their classroom projects. And what we have found is that numerous ones uh, come out of these classes with really good ideas and decide that they might want to pursue potentially trying to start an LLC or sole proprietorship based on that uh, particular idea they develop. Um, let's take a look at the small business development centers. Um, they have, um, if you're a, um, a community member or a student, um, this is a great place to start. You, you have no clue, you have maybe a, a, an idea in the back of your head and you're thinking, 
what's really involved in starting a company and how can I learn about that? Um, and I have an idea that I might want to talk to somebody about. So if you scroll down on this page here, there should be a map. I thought there was a map here. There it is. It was at the top now. Um, if you go to this map, you'll see there's like 18 of these around the state. So no matter where you are in Pennsylvania, there's probably one within a 20 minute or half an hour drive of where you live that you can plug into, sit down, talk to people about your ID and find out where might be the best place to plug in uh, to uh, get either some free resources. Most of them are free with the Small Business Development Center and occasionally they might have a small charge to, uh, uh, for something that uh, they need to uh, collect a few dollars to help uh, pay for the room or something like that. So the great resource for people who are just getting started. Um, Global Entrepreneurship Week is something that uh, any students listening or faculty listening that um, want to connect their students to um, the entrepreneurship ecosystem at Penn State. Uh, it's always the week before Thanksgiving here at, at Penn State. Penn State's one of the leading universities in the country for uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week. I believe we had something like over 70 or 80 events. Um, we just had this right before the uh, Thanksgiving this year. And uh, it was these, these are live streamed to multiple campuses. Multiple campuses are having events locally at their own campuses. So this is something that um, if you're a student or a faculty member, I would say definitely if you're not aware of this, go to their website, check it out. And um, next year, this would be a great place to plug in uh, as you move forward with um, something related to entrepreneurship. The, uh, we also have um, uh, an NSF grant here at Penn State that allows us to have an i uh, which is um, uh, something that NSF has set up for. Um, it's, it's really based around um, companies that, uh, or ideas that are being established in the STEM area. And um, it really works with helping people go from customer discovery through commercialization techniques. Um, it's designed around a of, uh, for uh, helping faculty, staff, undergraduate students, graduate students. You can be an alum, you can be a community member, so it's really open to anyone. What they do is they establish, uh, uh, if you qualify for this, you could get a $2,500 mini grant to help uh, uh, chase down this idea and, and, and uh, participate in this program. And then uh, if your idea continues to take off, uh, there's chances to compete for up to like $50,000 in national NSF uh, competition money as well. Uh, I should note that uh, under the NSF program, you definitely, there's a, there's a specific uh, way to approach this. And one of them is that it, there has to be an academic lead or a, a, an academic person who's the principal investigator here at Penn State. Then you have to have a business mentor also on your team. So somebody that has some kind of business or entrepreneurship experience, and then also obviously the entrepreneurial person who could be either a student, a faculty member, a community member, whoever. So they're usually like teams of three or more people that uh, participate in that program. Great program if, you're, if you want to learn more, you can go to this web link. Also, from an educational perspective, there's lots of free resources out there. This lynda.com site, if you go there, you'll find free, uh, uh, this is free to Penn State uh, students. Um, you can learn how to code. You can learn a lot about presentation skills, data management skills, those types of things. So, highly recommend people check that out. Um, also, we have the World Campus, which has online degrees and certificates. Um, that's something that any, anybody uh, can, can look into. We have a lot of alums that uh, come back and get either graduate programs or certificates in particular areas. The reason why I mention that is we also have a graduate certificate program in corporate innovation and entrepreneurship. So that might be something worth checking out if you already have a degree and you're looking at uh, maybe establishing some more um, uh, resources in that area. Let's take a look at the innovation hubs and other speakers and lectures. There's all of our hubs across the state. We have 21 of these. They're all offering all kinds of different services and different types of speakers and events, 
for not only students, but for community members and for existing entrepreneurs and for people that are already experienced entrepreneurs. We have lots of things. I would say go to those uh, back to that slide that has the links to that particular campus that you're near and check out what they're doing because there's something new all the time happening. The Kauffman Foundation is a really great resource. I'm going to click on that as well. Um, you can go there and they have a lot of particular um, specialty areas in entrepreneurship. And if you went to the uh, top heading here, you can go, if you're still developing ideas, there's lots of um, content here that's free that you can go to. There's also, and videos, there, you can go, if you're already ready to get started on an idea, you can go there, and then if you already have a business and you're looking to say, how do I now grow out my business and build it, there's also resources there. This is a great site. I highly recommend it. Um, Udacity is another uh, location. They have a whole, an entire free course on how to build a startup. So I would encourage people to go to that site. That's free as well. And then we have all kinds of resources being developed now within the um, the launch boxes or slash innovation hubs. Not all of our innovation hubs use the launch box moniker. Um, the idea test lab, that's more of a four week uh, problem definition type um, um, course. It's not a course, it's kind of like a thing that you, you attend in the evenings. You, you find out uh, who your customers are, where do you find them, what value your idea might have, and how do you, how do you differentiate your idea. So that's a great place to start if you have an idea and you, and uh, I, I like the way Lee Erickson talks about uh, this is the place where they'll tell you if your baby is ugly. So uh, if you have an idea, they'll sit down and talk to you about it and, and they'll vet it and help you get through that process to see if you can differentiate that idea and move it towards uh, something that might be a potential company in the future. The Fast Track Accelerator Program is something that uh, was developed here uh, at University Park, but now is being shared and used and even modified at different uh, campuses around the uh, state. So I would say definitely look into that. That's a 15-week uh, type accelerator program. This is where you really validate your idea. So um, once you feel like, okay, I really think I have a, an idea here, I went Maybe you went through the idea test lab and now you've solidified that this is a good idea. How can we validate now this idea and move it to um, through more customer discovery and, and validate it? The summer, um, uh, summer accelerators also exist. The one that we have here at University Park is called Summer Founders Program. And uh, that is something that uh, you can click on to find out. It's also not only for University Park students, but it's available to um, students at other campuses that want to apply. So it's an application process. There is uh, uh, philanthropic dollars that have been established to allow, I think, in the five to six uh, company teams, student teams, uh, to actually spend the full summer. And that the money helps uh, support them I think they're like $10,000 grants to help support them to work through the summer uh, on their company and establishing their company. Great program. If you can get accepted into that program, it's worth, it's really worth applying for and seeing if it's something that, that might fit for you. The business model canvas is another educational tool. I'd like to list it. If you clicked on this link, you would go to a site where you can actually watch a video and it'll walk you through the whole business model canvas. This is what it looks like. Um, it's really a one page uh, type of visual that you can put everything about your company and your ideas and how you're str struggling with putting it all together in your mind, put it on one page. And you can describe your idea, you can talk about how you design it, you can challenge yourself, you know how you can, you can work these things in these different sections and pivot uh, based on what you find out as you go through and modify your business idea as you go along. So definitely uh, go back to that link on the previous page and watch the video and we'll show you how to walk through that. Okay, so we've now educated ourselves really well and we've learned a lot about uh, what, what it may take to start a company and now we're gonna go into ideation. And there's a lot of classroom exercise and assignments that are going on at Penn State. So I can't, couldn't ever list all of them that are happening. But if you're a student, uh, 
think about the different classes that you're taking and and um, many of the faculty are starting to build those kinds of <coughs> ideas um, uh, idea type projects into their classes and sometimes some very good ideas come out of come out of that and this is where students start to get the vision we have a lot of also pitch contests that allow people to um, come up with new ideas and pitch them and also um, find out uh, whether those ideas have legs and um, so I listed a few here that are that happen at University Park that I think um, I know that the Ag Springboard is open to anybody uh, across the Commonwealth and other campuses. Uh, the Idea Maker Challenge, I believe, also is. The M Health Challenge is something that's done here at University Park. It's where the College of Nursing, I think the College of Health and Human Development, and also the IST College, team up uh, students from each one of those, and they come up with an idea that uh, could potentially help or be disruptive in the um, healthcare industry. Really uh, f fascinating program. I, um, I think I'm going to try to work on getting that uh, maybe streamed out so other people can see the results of that. I'm, I'm, I've been totally impressed with some of the ideas that have come out of these students uh, working in this program, but it also shows the collaborative effect of how students from different uh, uh, colleges can work together to solve problems in one particular area. Uh, startup week activities, it's really important. Uh, I would go to this link and look and see what's happening for startup week. It's for April 1, 1 through 5 this year coming up in the spring semester. There's a lot going on here at University Park, but uh, for other students at other campuses, I would say check into this and see if you have activities going on at your campus as well as whether you could participate in some of the activities virtually that are happening here at University Park. Um, a lot of that stuff is live streamed and, and you could uh, participate in it. The Hack PSU is also um, a really cool um, thing that's around uh, ideation. Uh, it's usually in early November. We just had the, had the one uh, just recently. There's about 600 plus students from across the country that uh, come in. They're hackers, they're coders, they're innovators, they're creators, um, and it's free. Uh, so there's a lot of resources to help uh, potentially get you here to the University Park campus. So if you're struggling with the uh, cost for uh, transportation or they also uh, provide food and that type of thing. And what they do is they use technology to try to solve real world problems in a uh, condensed time or format. Most of you are familiar with what a hack uh, event is, but um, some great things come out of these and I would encourage students to think about that. The Nittany uh, Artificial Intelligence Challenge is another uh, great, that it's in its second or third year now. Some great potential companies have come out of this where they utilize artificial intelligence to help uh, solve problems and maybe even start companies using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, the Ben Franklin Big Idea Competition is also something that there's four regional uh, Ben Franklins around the state of Pennsylvania. And um, I know the Central Pennsylvania one uh, does a Big Idea Competition. And this is something that uh, there's, I think it's a $25,000 prize for the, uh, the, the people who pitch the best idea. And then usually that means that um, it's such a good idea that Ben Franklin wants to be involved in working towards uh, uh, adding additional resources as they grow out a potential uh, company or idea. There's also a lot of local and regional events on campuses and, and in your community. So definitely go to your uh, Innovation Hub links in your area and check and see what's going on and check back from time to time because there's new things being added constantly. Okay, now we're ready to we're we're ready to maybe form a company based on the idea that we've come up with, and how do we go about doing that? Um, we talked about the twenty one innovation hubs. They are there to help. They are there to uh, say, where are you? If you're really to start a company, how do you do that? Yeah, we can help you with that. We can help you with the paperwork. We can help you understand maybe where you have to go to find uh, resources. How do you find potential employees? That type of thing. Um, the uh, Fast Track Accelerator Happy Valley Launchbox is, is definitely in the build phase. 
We also have, I'm going to click on the resource navigator because I think this is really important. Um, this is probably one of the most important, oops, let me go back here. Uh, going forward there. The uh, resource navigator is probably one of the most important sites if you're taking anything away from today. Uh, if you're looking for resources in innovation and entrepreneurship in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, I would say this is got to be on your list of, of places to go. Um, you can filter, okay? So you can go to an area, uh, and let's say you lived in central Pennsylvania, and you wanted to find out uh, what kind of accelerator programs are around, uh, what kind of um, intellectual property assistance is there. Maybe I'm looking for a maker space, and I can come down here and I can scroll down and check off central Pennsylvania and it will bring up the resources um, I think I need to click on start here oops yeah so here right here is the listing of the resources that uh, would be listed for that so you can really dial in uh, regionally the resources and then these places are all listed to where you can go visit their websites and find out what they offer in those particular areas. So definitely this is a site that you should peruse and play around with and see what's out there. And um, I think you'll be amazed by <coughs> the resources that are available around the state. It's constantly being updated as well. So there are uh, new resources being added all the time. Another important one is uh, Penn State now has a, um, uh, an entrepreneurship law clinic as well as an intellectual property clinic. And um, those were uh, originally for uh, the Happy Valley Launch Box and the University Park. And about a year ago, um, the program was so successful here that uh, a decision was made that they wanted to offer that across the state. This is a, a almost invaluable service. Uh, when you think about starting a company, you really need assistance in um, what, how do I start a company? What is the best? Should I start an LLC or should I be a sole proprietorship or should I incorporate? What, are, what do I do? And, and I could really use some assistance there. And so the law clinic is a free service that uh, the students and the uh, professors can help with. The intellectual property clinic is also extremely valuable. It helps us uh, helps you understand how do I protect my intellectual property? Do I do I apply for patents? Do I do copyrights? How do, what do I do to make sure that my idea is well protected and is not stolen by someone else or, or utilized by someone else? So um, that's another great uh, uh, resource that I think everybody should uh, check out. Okay. Um, we also have, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, last one linked here is the Cyprarian Librarians. We have, um, uh, we are a U.S. patent, Penn State has a U.S. patent uh, library, which is available to uh, the general public. And so you can click on this resource and see all the patent and trademark resources that you can use for researching. Is there something out there that already exists that I'm thinking about? Or is there a trademark or a patent that I need to be aware of that I uh, be careful not to violate? Or um, if, if there isn't, then maybe I can go ahead and how do I go about doing that along with the uh, law clinic and establishing that for myself? So definitely that is another great, uh, these three resources, actually all four of these here um, are almost like you should definitely go and check those out and de dig deeper after this presentation today. As we uh, continue to build, realize that Ben Franklin Tech Accelerators, um, we had, we, it was started here in State College at the uh, Ben Franklin Central Pennsylvania, but I believe now we have two or three of these tech accelerators around the state. This is where um, uh, a lot, it's a 10 week program, mostly for tech type companies. Um, and uh, it gives you uh, stipends, there's a boot camp to uh, compete. Um, and so you learn over a 10 week period. Um, it really started out as being a faculty who had subject matter expertise in particular areas, had great ideas and wanted to commercialize and maybe start a company, but they had no business background or, or uh, had any experience in establishing a business. And so this kind of ties in the technology along with um, starting businesses and how to make decisions to go forward or not. How do I, how do I take this to, to maybe even lead 
to larger potential investments by Ben Franklin through uh, low interest loans and things like that. The Office of Entrepreneurship and Commercialization, or OTM, uh, here at Penn State, I would just mention that, uh, go to that site. There's a lot of um, intellectual property that's already on the shelves here at Penn State that have been developed by faculty that are available for either purchase or licensing from Penn State. <clears throat> we recently had a student that uh, <clears throat> found some intellectual property in the um, fertilizer ag area and was able to take that and uh, license it and develop a company around it. And he's uh, actually doing quite well right now. And so I just mentioned that to say that um, if you have a particular subject matter area that you're interested in, maybe check that out and see if there's intellectual property that you might be able to exploit and, and, uh, and build a company around. <clears throat> the Penn State uh, Learning Factory is the <coughs> Senior Engineering Design Capstone course at Penn State. Um, there's, there's multiple um, learning factories around the state. So I just wanna make sure that uh, we uh, put a, 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 a word out there that at the Penn State University Park is not the only one. I think there's one at the Barron campus as well as the Berks campus. They all do things just a little bit differently, but the, um, the learning factory at the University Park is always obviously the largest. It's a semester long program. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes. Um, but um, it's definitely for anybody that needs um, engineering design assistance um, in, and especially in the prototyping area. This is a, a fantastic resource for um, a reasonably inexpensive resource that could be used to help um, build out an idea or, or a prototype. Also, the Ink U competition, I put it in the build section here because this is for students, uh, undergraduate students at Penn State across all campuses. That if they have started a company, they can compete to become top six. And if they, if they are through a video competition and if, they're, if they make the top six, then we compete them in a Shark Tank-like competition on a television show on WPSU that uh, allows them to compete uh, usually for a pool of $30,000 or more as awards to help them continue to build out their company. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute as well. The uh, PENTAP, the Pennsylvania Technical Assistance Program, we're here as an additional conduit to help um, companies in, in any area. Um, we specialize in the energy and environment and also in innovation. But basically, we're here to be a, another uh, resource for people to help navigate the university. This university is so large that um, we at least know how to connect to the colleges and maybe find a resource that you might be looking for, specifically as subject matter experts um, in particular fields of study. Feel free to call us and connect with us to help in that regard. Um, the Venture and IP Conference is also something that we mentioned. It's done every 18 months. We've had two of them so far at Penn State, and it continues to grow significantly. Um, it's usually a showcase event for startup ventures, and it's also a networking event that allows investment firms to come and look at the, what kind of companies are being um, started up here in Pennsylvania and then help them uh, maybe invest in helping them commercialize those ideas. We um, sometimes also, we try, try to uh, showcase some of our top student companies by allowing them to pitch to um, these uh, people that attend these IP conferences as well. Uh, so keep that in mind and, and click on that for, for more information. And then we already talked about the small business development centers. They're always available no matter what um, uh, level you are in. They'll help you navigate and plug into resources, not only from Penn State, but from other universities around the state or whatever makes sense based on the uh, region that you're in. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the Learning Factory, which is um, uh, the Senior Engineering Design Capstone course. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for uh, especially companies that are um, already getting to the area of where they might want to build out a prototype or they're having um, engineering assistance problems. So this isn't just for startups, but it also could be applied to existing companies that are maybe developing new products and they're struggling with something that they need engineering assistance on. 
it's a great way. Uh, we ha- like I said, we have we do about 250 projects a year here at the University Park campus. Ours is a 15 week uh, course uh, where we put teams of four to six engineering students to work. And what's important here is they work on the project that's scoped by the company. So it's either a startup or an existing company that says, I have this problem and I want the students to work on. And um, I know the Barron campus has a program. I think theirs might be a year long program, two semesters. Berks has a, pro- a program. Harrisburg might have also have a program. So check out your regional programs. Also realize that the Learning Factory here at University Park, we, we go not only statewide, but nationally, and we even do international projects as well. Um, and again, uh, we can sometimes cover some of those costs for the, uh, for the Learning Factory pro- projects through um, uh, for startups and uh, companies that have financial difficulty. So don't let the cost of the program projects um, interfere with uh, getting started. Get Talk to us if that's an issue. Um, okay, so now if we want to continue on and grow um, our companies, we need investment. Our companies actually need to generate revenue, right? And then we also need investment to help us build out our company so we can reach more customers. So In the grow section here, we have lots of local chambers of commerce around the state. Feel free to check in with them. Um, They can help. We have the, uh, what we talked about, the Venture and IP Conference, which is a great way. The local innovation hubs have incubator spaces. Many of them, if not most of them, have that. Um, So look into that. That's where you can actually maybe get low-cost space to have a desk or maybe even set up um, to have your company. We have some spaces here at University Park for that. Um, the i opportunity that we talked about before can help you grow out that idea into a potential company and compete for bigger dollars. The uh, Ben Franklin is a great place to go as you get into this growth mode. Um, they can work with low interest loans and equity investments into the business to help uh, get over that hump when you have that great idea and you just need cash uh, and you need to move forward because you need to uh, buy uh, either inventory or, or, or resources. Um, we also have lots of local regional venture capital organizations around the state. Uh, feel free to check in, um, maybe even just Google that in your local region. We have one that was set up especially here at Penn State called 1855 Capital. You can click on that resource as well. Um, That is one where most of the things we talked about today in competitions and things, there are grants and awards towards your company where we don't ask for any equity position in your company. These are free resources that we're here trying to spur and develop economic development. But when we get into venture capital, again, this is very like Shark Tank. They're looking to invest in your company, but they want to get uh, something for uh, their investment. Require requiring equity in your business. So a, realize that 1855 Capital and also the um, the Smeal Garber Center for Venture Capital, also those places are potential sources of money to to continue to move your company forward. But they will be looking to uh, establish some kind of uh, equitable position in your business for that assistance. Um, Additional information um, for competitions, just realize that there's lots of classroom projects and challenges. We have uh, individual college competitions. Um, uh, We have lots of uh, hub competitions, not only idea competitions, but company competitions, startups. Um, We have lots of um, um, other university and regional ecosystem competitions. I bring that up because we have had students from University Park that participated in our competitions, won money or maybe didn't win money, went on and, and competed. One of them went to a Temple University and won $20,000 in a Temple University competition. Others have gone to Carnegie Mellon and other places. We've had a one student team that took third in the South by Southwest competition in Texas. We also had a student team that uh, was in our EQ competition that won the Cisco National Award and won $100,000 in a national competition. So um, I bring that up and that you gotta keep your eyes and ears open and, uh, and look for competitions, Google that and see what's out there. 
And then I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, Ink U competition. This is uh, near and dear to my heart, and uh, it is one that's open to all the campuses across the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, it's for undergraduate student-run companies only. They have to have 50% ownership or more, the, the undergraduate students in that company to compete. Um, they can actually compete in the, in the first phase video competition without actually having a company established. But if they make the top six, their idea would be so good that we would highly encourage and help them get their company established. Usually it's an LLC or something like that. And then um, those top six student companies, then we coach them. Uh, to do a two and a half minute present pitch presentation on television show called the investment on WPSU um, And they can compete for awards for up to thirty thousand dollars or more We've had uh, we've been doing this now for about four years and uh, we've had numerous fifteen thousand dollar awards seventy five hundred dollars awards and last year uh, The team that won took the full prize. They took all thirty thousand uh, dollars the, the coaches or, I mean the the judges felt so that it was so good that they wanted to award the whole 30,000. So um, it's significant money that can help really move a company to the next level. So definitely check out the investment promo um, uh, link, which will show you a quick video. And then you can actually watch last year's one hour television show on WPSU at this link and see the students that pitched and see what's involved and uh, would love to have as many of you students that are listening that are starting companies compete in the um, in the uh, competition okay um, just one last quick little plug about uh, pentap um, we I wouldn't be um, uh, a good employee if I didn't do that. So we want to talk a little bit about what PAMTAP does is we have an innovation pillar here, which really works with helping uh, you find those resources and product and process improvement. We, do, we, we, we are a partner with the Learning Factory and helping establish and scope projects there. And then we're also heavily into the student entrepreneurship and competitions here at Penn State. So feel free to reach out to us if you have questions in that area. We also do uh, pollution prevention and energy efficiency assessments. We do those all over the state. Um, we also do um, E3 uh, type projects and also ISO 50001. So if any of you uh, resonate in any of those areas, um, let us know and we'd be more than happy to um, get you connected. Okay. Um, all right, so um, the, the presentation today was really a snapshot as of today on November 29th, 2018. Um, these resources are, are stable that you've seen today and committed, but there's gonna be a lot more added as we move forward. Some of our innovation hubs are just getting started and established, um, especially at the Commonwealth campuses. So seek out and you shall find, I would say, is uh, look for those resources that are out there in your area. Go to that resource navigator and uh, peruse that and look for the resources that might uh, help with your entrepreneurial curiosity. So thanks for spending your lunch hour with us today. And at this point, uh, let's open up for questions. But first, let me answer the first one. I know that some of you that might have come on late didn't hear what I said in previously in the start, that if you give us your email address today um, um, or send me, a, send me a note to my email address that's listed on the slide right now, uh, I'd be more than happy to send you today's slide deck because uh, if you watch this um, webinar on the archive, you won't be able to click on the uh, the links. But if you if I send you my PowerPoint slide, you'll be able to click on all the links and dig a lot deeper into uh, a lot of the resources that we talked about today. So with that, if you have questions, let's go ahead and type them into the uh, chat section, and I'll try to my best to answer them for you. I am not seeing any questions in the chat section right now. Um, I'm not sure if I'm looking at the right 
panel here or not? Because um, I would think there would be numerous questions based on all that information that I just uh, went through. Let's see. Okay, here we go. We are getting some. Uh, okay. Um, it's a, the question that we have here is, could you please tell me how to proceed with a food product? So um, that would be, I, I'd need to know a lot more information than just that. So I would say, um, you see my phone number there, and as well as my email address, feel free to give me a call or an email and I'd be more than happy to dig a little deeper with you and then try to tie you into the resources that might be available to you either through the Ag College here at Penn State University Park or at, uh, through your local cooperative extension or something like that in your particular area. Um, but canned food products are something that I'd need to know a lot more about uh, to be able to help you there. Um, so that's kind of like a, I believe we need to answer that question uh, in a phone call. So thank you. All right, uh, still see 12 participants on right now. Um, I don't see any new questions being typed. Uh, we'll sit here for maybe another minute or so and see if there's any additional questions. And if not, um, I would thank you all for attending today. Feel free to, um, this will be archived and put on our website at uh, pentap.psu.edu under the um, events section. So feel free to send others that might not have been able to participate today to that uh, link that the uh, archive should be up in a day or two and people could listen to this uh, presentation in the future and again if you um, want to email me at my email address txk128 at psu.edu I'd be happy to send a copy of the PowerPoints to everyone so with that said with no additional questions um, whoops here we go we have where can you find business funding when your personal credit isn't the greatest um, this would be a great question to ask your local SBDC. Um, they are tied into uh, local uh, potential banks and also um, local um, venture capital people. So I would have to know where you live uh, and what location that you're in. But um, again, if you want to send me an email, I can hopefully get you to the right location to, um, to tie into that. Okay, well, I think that um, that's, looks like that's all the questions for today. Let me see, scroll down, see if there's any additional questions. Um, but I think that I wanna thank everyone for participating today. And uh, I look forward to hopefully maybe hearing from some of you in the future. Thank you very much.